Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Today's webinar topic is fisheye dewarping, do more with less. Before we get started, here are a few notes. This webinar will be recorded. As long as you registered, you'll receive a follow-up email from us with the webinar recording and further reading material on this topic. If you have any questions, feel free to type them in the Zoom Q&A box and we'll address them at the end of the webinar. Now we have a very knowledgeable Eagle Eye employee here today, Tim Duncan, who is going to go more in depth on the topic of fish ID warping. A little background about Tim. Tim Duncan is our director of product who specializes in driving vision and roadmap for Eagle Eye networks. He focuses on collaboration between customer and company with cross-functional partners to deliver constant improvements and features. Now with that, I'll hand it over to Tim. Thanks, Heather, and thanks everyone for attending. Eli Networks was founded in 2012 by Dean Draco. He was the former president and CEO of Barracuda Networks. He also founded that company. Eagle Eye is number one in cloud video surveillance worldwide. Our headquarters are in Austin, Texas, which is where I'm at today. We also have offices in Tokyo, Amsterdam, and Colombia. So we're truly a global company, and we have customers in over 80 countries. Today, we're going to talk about fisheye cameras. Now, as the director of product management, I have to say I've had so many requests for fisheye cameras over the last couple of years. We've had so many people asking us to support those cameras in our interface. So now we've actually done the work. I'm going to show you today how you can use the fisheye cameras. So what is a fisheye camera? It's essentially a camera that has a 360 degree view and it provides the same coverage as multiple different cameras. So it can actually take the place of a PTZ camera and or multiple fixed cameras or cameras with multiple lenses where you have to stitch all the images back together. So what are the benefits of, of the fisheye warping? Well, number one, you reduce the number of cameras that are required to cover the same area. And also that means that you cut the cost of labor, there's less power consumption, and also less maintenance because you maintain one camera instead of three or four. And it gives you that 360 degree capture of everything. Now, what we're going to show you today is fisheye dewarping and virtual pan tilt zoom within that so that you can pan tilt zoom anywhere within the image, either live, either using previews or even historically after the fact, you're gonna be able to do that in the Eagle Eye interface. Because of that, there's 100% coverage. Now with a pen tilt zoom camera, traditionally, if you pan the camera off to the right of scene, it's not recording what's on the left side of the scene at that moment. You've gotta have multiple cameras to do that. Not so any longer with the fisheye dewarping. So our fisheye dewarping is actually client-based, and that's super important. What that means is you can do it in the client, in your web browser, you can do it on the mobile app and our Eagle Eye Viewer apps, and it can happen regardless of it being live or recorded footage. Matter of fact, you can even do it without a permission. If you have permission to view the video, you can virtually pan, tilt, and zoom around. Why? Because it does not alter the recording. Right, so in the previous way we did it, it was camera based. And we have a lot of fisheye cameras on our system. Some people choose to record the fisheye warped image, which we don't provide any dewarp. Most people would add those cameras and add multiple views from that camera. Currently, the way it is, each view that was added takes up a separate subscription because it's a separate camera and a separate stream from the camera when the camera was doing the dewarping. Well, the good news is that's no longer a requirement. Now you add the camera as a single fisheye warped view, and we will do the de-warping. So I'm logged in as a user on our demo account, and I'm going to switch down to the virtual PTZ. Now I've preset this up so that I have a fisheye view, I have a single view, and I have a quad view. Now in the preview, notice the icon. This is very similar to PTZ, but if we click, we activate the virtual PTZ within the preview. So I can now click around and I can also zoom in and I can zoom out using the middle mouse wheel. So I just zoomed out. I'm going to zoom in a bit. So that's the preview video. We can do that by activating and deactivating that here. Once again, it's this entire image that we have and we're merely virtually panning, tilting, and zooming within it. So it's not affecting any recording. I can also do the same thing on this quad view and each quad is independent. So I can actually zoom and pan and click within this view as well. So 
can zoom in, and I'll, I'll try to make that about the same as this one. But better than that, I'm going to disable that and go live. So in our live view, I can simply click and drag around, and I can use my middle mouse wheel to zoom just instantly. Each of these quadrants, I can click in the left one and do the same thing. Maybe I decided I wanted to have just a different view, or maybe I want to be zoomed in just a little bit more on this doorway. Once again, it's the entire warped image that we're doing, and here's a guy walking through. Let's see if I can just follow where he goes. So he's going off that way. So in real time, it's very easy to follow up. Oh, he's changed his mind. Where's he going to go now? Looks like he's going to come and talk to the receptionist. So I have the ability to do all that in real time as it's happening. And even more than that, I have the ability to do it historically. So I'm going to go ahead and open the history browser for this one. We'll take a look at the single view after we look at this one. Just going to back up a bit and simply hit play. So now in the historic video, I can actually just simply click and drag around in each of these quadrants. Right. So this could be the quad view. It could be the single view. And this is in historic. So I can play. I can pause. But once again, each one of these can be set independently on the playback right so we don't we're not we're not locked down to only seeing a single thing because we have this whole warped image to start with and we can do all of this on the playback so let's take a look at the single view you know you may want to set up like four views and make each of the preview windows a quadrant um, it, it's up to you really how you want to do it so I'm just gonna back up a bit all right this time I'm gonna just back to the beginning of a video segment and I'm gonna click play so the single view is really just that. It's just the single view, and we've got the ability to zoom and pan around within it, but it's just like the one view. So if uh, someone comes or walks up, or if we have the history of something going on, we can just historically go back and look at that, right? So we, we have the ability uh, to do whatever we want to do here. Of course, we can click and drag and go back and play it over and over to get exactly what we're looking for from it. But that's the single view. You can also do the dual panorama view as well. So we have a de-warping tab that appears on a fisheye camera. And so you can choose the fisheye, the quad, the double panorama, or the single view. So from the dashboard, you'll simply open the settings to get into the de-warping. Now notice on the dashboard that it, it's a different gear icon. This icon represents a parent-child relationship. So the main camera is the warped image view, and then underneath that, we're gonna add what we call viewports. And so we're gonna click the gear icon, open the settings, and notice there's a de-warping tab. And in that tab, we can select what type of viewport. And of those viewports, we can set it to fisheye, to a single view, double panorama view, or a quad view. So you can choose that, and then based on that, that's what you're going to see immediately in the settings. And then you'll be able to choose what orientation is that camera. Is it mounted on the wall? Is it mounted on the ceiling? Or is it mounted on the floor? So we cover all three possibilities so that it that setting helps us know how to do the D-warp, the first D-warps. Once that's done, once you've chosen it, you can simply click the little plus icon. The yellow plus is throughout our whole interface how we add something, and we'll add that viewport and you can name it. So you can simply make as many viewports as you like here, and these become cameras in our system that you can add to a layout and view the previews and view history. And that's a quick look at Eagle Eye Network's Fish ID warping in browser. So what are the next steps? Let's connect. We're happy to schedule a personalized demo to walk you through our platform. Check your email for more information. There's also a link in it to view this webinar. And now I'll give it back to Heather. Thanks so much, Tim, for that overview. Now we'll be switching to Q&A and take some time to answer any remaining questions you may have. Reminder, you can type your questions into the Q&A section of the chat box of Zoom, and we'll read them from there. So Tim, this is our first question. Does this de-warping feature work for indoor and outdoor fisheye cameras? Yes, it actually does work for indoor and outdoor cameras. All right, thank you. Another question we have is, can I view de-warped images in both the mobile app and the desktop view? Yes, that's true. Uh, in the iOS app, the Eagle Eye Viewer app, and also in the Android Viewer app, 
you'll be able to view those dewarped images just like on the web. Thank you very much. So we have another question here. Is it available on the 360 cameras already installed? If it's one of the cameras on our list, it will be available on the 360 cameras installed on uh, March 23rd. You can actually call into our support and ask them to push that support to your system. So it's basically replacing the camera support file that's required for that camera. So yes. You said that this feature is available right now. Is there anything that a user needs to do to access this if they just see a generic icon, the standard gear right now? Yes, they will need to contact our support team. And for our support team, we'll need to, um, um, for the support team, they need to go ahead and, and contact them and say, please add this to my uh, bridge. And it'll be added as a support file, a camera support file. All right, thank you for that. Another question that we have is, does it work for any fisheye camera or only specific camera models? Only specific camera models right now. So for those specific models listed, we've done the testing and they're working well. But uh, over time, we hope to add many, many more fisheye cameras. So feel free to uh, contact our support and request support for that, for, for a camera model you have that's not listed. Okay, thank you. So we have a couple questions coming in about cost uh, for the equipment installation and if there's any cost associated with each window. Oh, that there is no cost for any additional viewport. So what the cost is, is the height and the width basically of the fisheye view from the camera. So we're recording that fisheye view. We're doing the full image, that full image in fisheye. And then we are simply de-warping that into multiple views. So each view, no cost for the view. You could have, uh, you could set up a single quad view or you could set up each one of the quadrants in its own preview pane. And that's called a viewport for our system. So no additional cost for that. All right, sounds great. Another question we have here is, where is the list of supported fisheye cameras? Where can they find that information? Yeah, we're going to send an email out after for everyone who attended with a lot more information, but that list will be in our supported camera list on the website. Yep. And it'll be listed as a special feature. So on our supported camera list, go to special features, fisheye. All right, sounds good. So if a viewer wants to know if their camera's compatible, you'll be able to see that in the email that we send out following this webinar. That will also include the recorded webinar that we just presented today and further information on this topic. So thanks so much, Tim, for being our presenter on this subject. Thank you everyone for participating and we look forward to hearing from you.